So I'm just gonna scooch over here so I can have a permanent spot to put. So guys, the Eyes Like Fire cover came out yesterday, and I know we've been tormenting you guys this week with teasers on Monday and Tuesday, but I hope it was worth it, and I hope it built up your excitement for it, because I certainly think this cover was worthy of such excitement, I mean, I love this cover, guys. I mean, I loved the cover for Snow Like Ashes, but I am obsessed with this cover. It is still a chakram, but the brilliance cover artist and cover designers thought they would split it because in the first cover we had uh, the regular chakram with spring and winter in the background and for this one another of the seasons comes into play in a big way oh there goes the sun again <laughs> another of the seasons comes into play in a big way it's now three which i think is really cool because the first one was the regular chakra which kind of resembles a yin yang which represents balance and all that good stuff, and that really tied into the theme of Snow Like Ashes, but Ice Like Fire, I think it kind of almost looks like a peace symbol, almost? I know it's missing a line, but it kind of has a peace symbol type feel to it, which is also really cool and appropriate because things happen in Ice Like Fire, and there is no peace. Why would there be peace? This is a fantasy book. So of course it's very cool that it ties in with how contradictory that is, because there is no peace. Spoiler warning for anybody who has not finished Snow Like Ashes, from here on out, please do not watch this video if you have not read the book, because spoilers, lots of spoilers, going to happen, warning, starting now. What's going on here? The first snippet on uh, Monday was The Kingdom of Winter, which is it was on the Snow Lake Ashes cover too. The book starts in the Winter Kingdom and Mira's number one goal throughout this book, as it was through the first book, is to keep winter safe. So the Kingdom of Winter is still very important. The second uh, little section is the Kingdom of Spring, which was also on the Snow Lake Ashes cover. If you remember at the end of book one, the Kingdom of Spring was kind of fallen, so why would they still be involved in book two if anger is gone. Hmm. The third section! Uh, the new section, the only new section, because that is the the third uh, season kingdom that comes into play in Ice Like Fire, and that is the Kingdom of Summer! If you guys follow me on Twitter or Tumblr, I've been talking about one of the new characters in Ice Like Fire, who's my, one of my absolute favorite characters, and that is the Princess of Summer, Caradwin. Mira leaves winter for reasons and travels to uh, Summer, Yakim, and Ventrali. And Summer is her first stop, and that is where she meets Caradwin, and they become kind of... A, it's a BFF relationship that starts very rocky, because they're both very stubborn, and they're both... it's just hysterical watching them together, because they're they're fun. But then obviously the, the background is much darker and kind of morbid and scary compared to the Snow Like Ashes cover, which was a little more like, oh No, this cover is just straight up dark because this is the book where everything hits the fan. Like, like I said, peace. What peace? There is no peace. There is only darkness. So the second thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is the post that was on Cuddlebuggery in tandem with the cover reveal. There is a huge change in book two compared to book one. With fantasy books especially, the world gets so big after a while that it's really hard to keep the story in one character's point of view. Uh, and I knew that when I got into book two, Mira couldn't encapsulate everything that needed to happen. So that is why Mather is the new point of view character that will be an ice like fire. And for all you Team Theron people, I'm sorry, but <laughs> Mather's point of view was necessary for a number of reasons. The main reason is that at the end of Snow Like Ashes, Mather's world is just as shaken up as Mira's is. He thought that he would be the one leading their people back into the kingdom, and the fact that he now has a family, like, Sir's his dad. I told you guys there's gonna be spoilers. What are you still doing here? Suddenly he's no longer king, he has no responsibilities, and he has a family. His, his whole world is kind of shaken up. And to make matters worse, the girl he loves, she's now the queen, so she now is at the target of all the things that he thought he was the target of, and he's not a fan of that, because he loves her and he wants her to be safe. But he doesn't really know what his role is in her life, or what his role is in his life. You can read all about it on the Cuddlebuggery post, uh, I will put the link to it below. But I know for all you Team Theron people, again, super sorry that it's not his point of view. One of the other reasons that Mather's point of view was necessary is because he is in winter when Mira leaves and goes to Summer Kim and Ventrali, and I needed somebody in winter to recap the events that were happening there, and Mather is at the dead center of the events that are happening in winter. Which means then that Theron is with Mira when she travels. Just because Mather's point of view is the one that's in book two does not mean that she's who he picks, but it also doesn't mean that it isn't who he 
picks. I'm getting confused. Yes, it's Mather's point of view. I'm sorry, Team Theron people, but I hope you will still like the book. And honestly, there's so many Team Theron people. Mather needed some help, man. He needed a chance to sell his side of the story. And the snippet that's on Cuddlebuggery, that is the big part of this, is that there's actually a chunk of Mather's point of view on the Cuddlebuggery post. It's the first real long, lengthy look in Ice Like Fire. I did a few, like, one-liner snippets on Twitter a while back, but this is, like, three pages. Thank you so much for being a part of the cover reveal oh, and for sharing your excitement with me. Uh, you guys have made, you made last year so amazing and you've already made this year so incredible and I just, I can't properly express how big of a fan I am of you guys. I feel like I fangirl constantly over the fangirling. It's just a big cycle of fangirling. So thank you guys and I will see you next week when normal question and answer videos resume. So if you have any questions that you want me to answer on these videos here, leave them in the comments below or tweet them to me. Just hashtag them Q&A or Ask Sarah. And I will see you guys next week. Ah. This is totally hating myself with this, but the first character that I romantically fell in love with